Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on when you're watching this, and welcome back to Tech It. So you join me here at my quarry location in the process of setting up another quarry. As you can see, I am I've changed the approach that I've taken to these quarries. So rather than digging all the way down from the surface, I did a little bit of reading and found that uranium only really spawns in the bottom sort of level. Where are you, you loud man? Shut up. There we go. Have to take the edge off those. So they only really spawns in the bottom um, sort of 20 levels of the game. So therefore, I have moved my quarry approach all the way down here to the base levels of the world, meaning that hopefully I can focus very intently on delivering the. There we go. Delivering what I need as far as. Uranium is concerned for my nuclear setup. Let's just get rid of you. Put you back in misery. There we go. So I have been away for a long time, um, as you can see by the amount of quarry that has been destroyed down there. I've also had to mess around with a lot of things because a lot of things have gone wrong. Um, but I have got 63 uranium now. Uh, it has been oops, a long a long and drawn out process, but while I was dealing with waiting for the quarries to finish, I have taken the time to correct the Enderman's mistakes with the area around my base, uh, bringing it all up to sort of like a nice um, paved environment. Uh, I've also expanded this cactus farm to match the, the sort of larger one with more efficient use of space. So it's all good. I think we're, we're, we're making some good progress, and so it's time to really focus on... Um, Working out how I'm going to uh, start enriching this uranium ready to be used in my fission reactor. So that's the focus of today, is to get everything set up for enrichment. Now, I was messing around with my power glove, and I remembered that I can put radiation shielding on my power armor. So it needs two basic plating, two basic plating, two basic plating, and two basic plating. So if we make a load of basic plating, I think it's just iron. And a tin gear. Let's just make two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of those. And then we should be able to make an absolute load of these. Let's not make too many just in case I have put got more tinning. I do have tin ingots apparently. So now we can put our radiation shielding on all of our Right. Is, that, is that a different number? Oh, is that why? I've used it all. Apparently I can't read. So it needs three, does it? Oh well. There we go. So that should allow me to put basic shielding on here. There we go. So I've now all kitted out. And although I have my hazmat suit, I realised the mistake that I was going to have with my hazmat suit is that I can't fly with it. So having my secret military underground nuclear protection base only accessible via jetpack, I wasn't going to be able to access it. So the first thing that we need then when it comes to uh, my nuclear base is going to be in some energy cells because I don't have anywhere near enough redstone energy cells in order to get power to it. So that's fine, we've got enough of that. So we need to throw these over here. And while that's filling those up, we'll build the machinery that we need. So we're going to need some liquid ducts. Have I got any? Yep, let's not waste time building those. We're going to need an aqueous accumulator. What am I missing? A pneumatic something or other. So that's to provide water to everything that I'm going to need water for. 
else do I need? I'm going to need some redstone cable because it's fine. I'm going to need an energy tesseract actually, aren't I? Because I'm going to need to transmit power. This is not ideal. Um, okay, red stone energy cell. Should be able to craft two of these. Now, logically, I could put them onto charge, but we're going to take the. I don't even know what's called now. Tesseract, isn't it? Liquid Tesseract. Energy Tesseract. So let's throw one of these in here. Like so. That's all good. So we're going to need power and we're going to need water. But I think I can make... So I can get the water from nearby. And then we're going to need a... Um extractor, then a nuclear boiler, and a centrifuge. Excuse me while I take a sip of my drink. Okay, so this could be a little bit of a, a drawn out oops, episode while we get everything set up. I didn't want to do any of this offline really because I didn't want you to uh, miss out. So that will allow us to receive power now. Take two energy cells to store that power because we don't know how much we're going to need. So a centrifuge requires steel plating and all of that. But that's the th that's how much of that can we build? Very little. Basic circuits. I'm sure we're going to need a lot of these, aren't I? Oops, wrong one. So that's an advanced circuit sorted. Steel plates is just steel. I can make a couple of these. That's easy enough. So we've got plenty of pistons. So that's my centrifuge done. Quite expensive. Also going to need a nuclear boiler. Which is steel plates and random crap. I think I should have all the rest of that though. Oh no, I've got no furnaces, have I? Luckily, I've got 24,000 cobblestone. I did to build my furnace. My furnace is all downstairs, I think. Nuclear boiler. And then an extractor. This requires an elite circuit, which requires an advanced circuit, lapis, and gold. Okay. Whoops. So this is going to be by far the most expensive. I need four of these. Make. I don't even know how I did that or where I got to that from. There's two of them sorted. It's my elite circuit, brick in it. Okay then. And that should give me the extractor. So that's the order of events that we need. Uh, have I got any water buckets? I have. Let's just take th three of these in case we have any problems. Don't need to make landmarks at the moment. My quarry started to kick out some resources yet? Not yet. Still setting itself up. Okay. So. The first thing I need to do is just have a look at my... Yep, yeah, so there's plenty coming through calc. I've tried to use these energy cells as storage now to store power, but they don't really seem to work as I'd expect it to. So I'm still learning how to store and transmit power. So I've got three inputs at 100 and an output of 35 to try and give me 100 down the main line. These are all coming from the magmatic engines, which I've had to find some more lava sources for. I've also got two lava fabricators, which if I want to, I can use to fabricate lava. But when I have a lava source producing lava it doesn't seem to be a, a major concern I don't know why the, the graphics isn't loading I've also moved my underground steam engines to here to use the uh, the wood to produce power when I need it how much is in here so there's still quite a lot of power in each of these 
there's no need to run my generator for now. There's plenty. Again, they're kicking out at a much, redu re much reduced rate to pass the power to the mains power. So that'll power the quarry. I can switch them all on and all off. I'm loving this red net cable. But we need to focus now on the special nuclear bunker. Probably going to be a zombie following me in here, isn't there? Let's just get rid of him. Yep, it's done. Okay. So, I'm guessing it makes sense to have it up here. The only problem I'm going to have, perhaps, is the need for the water. Um, so, have I got any of any of these bricks? Yeah. So we could very happily just put this here and then put the water in here. Uh, don't think an Accuous Accumulator requires any power. Might be wrong, not normally, but we'll see. I keep forgetting that this particular um, type of cabling doesn't like connecting when it's something activated. So let's work out how I'm going to do all of this. So this is logically the middle. So where am I going to put these? Ideally I'm going to want like the nuclear there, there and there maybe. So let's bang this down here. Take it from the mains power for now. Oops. And then we will. Do we want to try and multiple power? No, I'll just stick with one for now. That's producing the power. So I don't need the centrifuge. What do we need first? I need the chemical extractor first. The fence shoes want to go there. We need to transfer there. So let's go for the extractor here. The extractor is going to need two things. The first is power. Would happen to have moved my wrench right now. So this is hopefully just producing a small amount of energy. This is now going to be. Oops. Now I've got enough power. It then needs water, which is what my aqueous accumulator is going to provide. Like so. Doesn't really look particularly pretty, but hopefully that's doing the job. And now, if we take some uranium if you spell uranium correctly. Let's just take 32 for now. I'm assuming we can use uranium for other things as well. I believe it goes in here and it starts to extract it. Um, we need... What is it that we need? We're going to need to pull it into the nuclear boiler. Which also requires power and water. I believe if you click like that, there we go. One button. So this is all powered up and ready to go. And then that's the wrong cable. I believe if we go for a wooden transport pipe and let me guess, I'm not going to have a gate in here am I? Okay, so let's, I don't know why the bottom of that door is purple. I'm pretty sure I just avoided a creeper. Oh, 
along in here. Let's grab a couple of these over here. So I want some more target gates. I need to throw all of this into my ME network, don't I really? That will um, allow me to access it from over here. So that's something I'm going to have to do. Let's create another disk for my disk drive. And sort that all out. A little piece of rot fresh. So if we throw an old target gate on here, and then give it the command, not that button. Okay, the wrench is a pain in my ass. So I want it to pulse whenever the pipe is the redstone signal. So it's throwing all the yellow cake across already, but let's have a lever for now. We'll do all the red net piping in a minute. Don't quite need 60 of those. I don't know why I've got 60 of those really. So let's put a lever down here. And I'll switch that on. Transfer the yellow cake across. So the yellow cake then gets boiled by the nuclear boiler that produces this uranium hexafluoride. And we need to then put the uranium hexafluoride into the centrifuge. And because of the way these bloody cables work, I need two of them. To make sure it's clear which is the output and which is the input. And then I can't put a lever down there annoyingly because it's a... bloody glass block. So let's go for brick. Hopefully that will let me do that. And we'll just make it all pretty. That's throwing that into there. This is then going to require power. Uh, it's going to be a pain in my ass, isn't it? Don't try and power yourself, you idiot. So where are we going to go from here? So we go from here. Like so. You still drink, you're gaining power while powering all three of these. So you're now spinning up the centrifuge. So this is the longest and slowest process of these three is to produce the actual um, uranium itself. I um, wonder what would happen if I took my power armor off. Am I getting, uh, getting dosed with radiation? Pretty sure if I pick some of this up, it will. Yeah, there we go. That's bad. Oh, that's a lot of radiation for a long time. I might, that might kill me, actually. That might have been... I might be about to lose 61 levels. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, no, it's healing me at about the same pace. So my centrifuge, nice and powered. Let's see if I can actually reduce down. There's no need to. It'll pull as much as it needs. So that's filling that nicely. Plenty of that in there. It's still got loads. How many am I getting per? I think you get two or three per per um. So it doubles. It basically it's like a macerator for uranium. It or a uh, pulverizer for it for uh, uranium. It, it doubles your your ore at least three so triples triples your ore and then hopefully this will get to the end in a second and we will have our first piece of either and this is the annoying thing either enriched uranium or breeder uranium unfortunately i believe breeder uranium is more uh so what i'm looking for more regularly produced than enriched uranium so i'm more likely to get breeder uranium but we have plenty of heterofluoride available to us now. So we have got breeding uranium, yep. So we can use breeding uranium to replenish and restock, but we can't really use breeding uranium to, uh, to power our fission reactor in the same sense. So I will just cut the video for five, 10 minutes or so. Just give this chance to run through five or six times. Hopefully produces our first pieces of rich uranium. And um, once we've got that, we'll end the episode. And then next time, when we come back, we will look to connect the fusion reactor into a power grid. So I'm going to build a hell of a lot more energy, uh, redstone energy cells because I have no idea what the output's going to be from my fusion reactor. 
and then um, we'll, uh, we'll turn it on and see how long it takes for me to blow it up and wipe out this corner of my map. <laughs> All right, guys, so I'll be back in uh, just a few minutes, uh, in seconds as far as you are concerned. I'll leave this running for a good 20 minutes, half an hour or so, just to see how much um, enriched uranium we get. All right, see you in a minute. Okay, so there we go. There you see it, as you can, as I hopefully you can. There we have our first piece of enriched uranium. And uh, it took bloody ages. So if the ratio between uranium-238 and 235 is pretty much going to be a ratio of 1 to 4, we're going to be here for a long time because we need three enriched uranium to make a fissile fuel rod. So the fissile fuel rod is what we're going to need to, to power our fusion reactor. Realistically, though, that particular power sequence doesn't take very long. So we're going to need quite a lot of these fissile fuel rods if we want to run the generator continuously. Um, realistically, we could run it, obviously, to uh, to boost, to, to really super fuel or fill loads of energy cells. And then as we drain those energy cells, hopefully slowly, we then can top up our power with my uh, current existing setup of generators. But uh, yeah, so there we have it. We have successfully enriched our first piece of uranium, which means we are set and ready to go then and start to produce our fuel. Now we have a lot of this hexafluoride and obviously the centrifuge is extremely slow. So maybe I can throw down a couple of them. So put one there, one there, one there maybe, and uh, have a bit more of a, bit more of a go at producing these so I'm going to have a look at that and I will see you in the next episode where hopefully we will have our fissile fuel rod and we can turn on our fission reactor I hope you've enjoyed the uh, enriched uranium episode guys and I will see you in the next one bye for now